So at this point, pretty much everyone has incorporated ChatGPT or Gemini into their day-to-day -day life. We all know that it's incredibly useful and that in some cases, it can definitely accelerate the rate at which you can do work. I actually pay for ChatGPT every month, about $20, but I've always wondered whether the most expensive model of ChatGPT is actually that much better than the free model or even ChatGPT Plus, which is $20 a month. Like, does that tenfold increase in the price actually translate to an improved model that's noticeable in the kind of work that you're doing. Now my primary use case and the way that I benchmark these models in these videos is in maths problems that I encounter like on my PhD that I can kind of assign to ChatGPT and see whether it can give me ideas or even solve them in some cases. I found it very useful and for me it's well worth $20 a month because it saves me time and it means that I can actually spend some more time doing some other stuff um, other than kind of the grunt work tasks that I encounter uh, during my maths PhD. But $200 is an insane amount to put towards any kind of subscription, yet alone some sort of model which is only actually kind of accelerating the rate at which you do work. And you know, if your work is as a PhD student, it's kind of likely that you can't justify $200 a month on an AI model. But this benchmark is important. It's not just about my PhD. It's important that we know how good these tools actually are and not to just take what they say at the release events at face value. A significant step along our path to AGI. So I thought, why not try it out and put ChatGPT Pro, $200 a month, against ChatGPT Plus, which is $20 a month, to really test the limits of these models by giving them three problems. One of them is a proof of an identity, which I know to be true because I've tested it in so many different ways using kind of Wolfram Mathematica and other reasons to believe it by comparing it with current research results that are already out there. The second problem is more open-ended, although it's still a fairly hands-on maths problem, kind of going through lots of algebraic details. It's slightly more theoretical than problem one, but still quite heavy on algebraic or analytic computation. And what I mean by this is like, it's this equals this equals this equals this, uh, rather than just testing something on the computer and seeing if it works, which would be a numerical simulation. All of these problems are in the field of random matrix theory, and in problem two, I'm giving it a computation that I've done for a lower dimensional case, and I'm asking it to see if it can generalize to the higher dimensional case. To test whether it can come up with new ideas with regards to this problem. And finally, the most open-ended question, which I expect will take the longest thinking time, which is actually the generalized case of the second problem, just to see whether this $200 model can have a sort of eureka moment to try and figure out a problem, which I, for one, um, yet to solve. So to summarize, problem one is a proof of a theorem which some of you might have seen before, which I've asked multiple models to solve, but none of them have actually managed to do yet. Problem two, I'm giving it some algebra for dimension two case and asking it to prove the dimension three case. And finally, in problem three, I'm asking if it can just solve the general dimensional case. I don't think there's any chance it's going to be able to do this. And like I said, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't spend the most thinking time on this problem, given it's evidently the most difficult one. Will $200 ChatGPT be able to solve these problems, or will it be basically the same level as $20 ChatGPT. I don't know, but let's get straight into it. So after sending all through questions on three tabs of GPT 5.1 Pro, which surprisingly, despite the release of 5.2, is the current best model that's available using the Pro subscription, and doing the same on the $20 a month 5.2 on extended thinking mode, which any month where I'm not using the $200 model would be what I normally use when doing maths research. In problem one, $200 GPT 5 Pro thought for 25 minutes and 36 seconds, which is a lot longer than I'm used to with GPT 5 Plus, which thought on this problem for 14 minutes and 24 seconds seconds. Despite the prompt being very explicit not to focus on certain aspects of the problem which I've already solved, GPT 5.1 Pro spent most of its answer recapping these things which I'd asked it not to recap. On the other hand, I was actually very surprised with 5.2 Plus because it actually gave a solution to the problem which I've been asking it over multiple videos which I hadn't seen yet. What did it do? Well, it's actually quite beautiful really. It took something which is quite complicated, at least for me to understand, called a Newton divided difference. It's just a way of approximating something and it basically writes it in what's called a contour integral, which if you're like me and you haven't worked on divided differences before, I wouldn't have thought to be able to do this, but it relies on what's known as the residue theorem, which is fine, it's a very well-known theorem, but having it in this contour integral form actually makes the problem way easier to solve. So to clarify, the benefit of what it did is it converted a complicated problem of approximating a polynomial at n points through the Newton divided difference method. It converted that object, which relies on the Newton divided differences method, into a different kind of machinery from a field called complex analysis, in which 
there are so many tools that are very well known uh, which were way more familiar to me. The reason why this method was so interesting to me was because it makes the difficult part of the problem much simpler because when it's in this contour integral actually the difficult part which was the derivatives uh, gets kind of trivialized into a much easier problem. Without going into too much detail it basically converts derivatives into multiplication by a rational function. You then subsequently evaluate the contour integral through the residue theorem. Easy peasy. So I have to say in this case it was a clear win by GPT 5.2 uh, on extended thinking mode and GPT 5.1 Pro was actually really not that impressive. And so at least from what I can see so far, I think ChatGPT 5.2 has just basically solved this problem now. So yeah, not looking good for the $200 a month model. I mean, what am I looking at right now? Why did the cheaper one manage to solve it and the expensive one didn't? When it came to problem two, 5.1 Pro thought for 25 minutes, whereas 5.2 on extended thinking mode thought for about 15 minutes. Neither model actually managed to give me a satisfactory answer which goes into enough detail or closes into an analytic form which I was kind of after but by the by I think 5.1 Pro was a more impressive answer and closer to the truth GPT plus gave a very similar answer to be honest but I find its reasoning slightly more difficult to follow and I'm not fully convinced that its answer is strictly correct what surprised me the most when it comes to problem three is that both models spent less time on this problem than the previous two problems even though on the outset I would have thought that this problem should warrant way more compute time because they are way more general way more difficult and way more advanced it's the complete general all-encompassing case of the problem too and yet they thought about it for less time $200 GPT Pro thinking for a respectable 24 minutes and what might look like an hour for GPT Plus which thought for about 8 minutes despite the fact that the cheaper GPT Plus thought for less time the answers were very similar and although GPT Pro did provide a better answer and put it into better context with regards to relating it back to the known cases which I'd given it I have to say that the answers are much and much the same I mean there's really not that much difference to them and there's definitely not as was seen maybe in problem one a kind of candidate for a definite better answer other than slight subtle points in which GPT Pro was slightly better in the sense that it related it back to previous known cases. I have been quite surprised actually given how similar the answers to the three prompts were across these two models. ChatGPT Plus generally gave a very similar kind of set of ideas as ChatGPT Pro. Of course ChatGPT Plus was on 5.2 extended thinking mode whereas on the side of ChatGPT Pro, we've had to use 5.1 Pro mode because, at least on my end, they haven't launched 5.2 Pro yet. These are problems which just haven't been solved, and having seen multiple academics work on these problems, I know for sure that they haven't been solved. So they are definitely challenging enough for ChatGPT to be able to kind of distinguish itself in the Plus mode, which is $20, and the Pro mode, $200. However, it hasn't really done that. I really expected a problem of this difficulty to split ChatGPT between really the best of the best and just the model which is good in most cases. But yeah, it didn't really do that. And I guess I am really surprised that they can justify charging $200 for a model which is basically the same as the $20 a month one. So would I feel ripped off if I'd paid $200 for these models? I probably would actually, because I don't really seem to be getting anything better or any real noticeable huge improvement, which you should if you're paying 10 times more uh, between the standard $20 a month one. Actually the answers in both cases were really good but in no cases was the answer so good that I believe that the problem is solved. Like it hasn't comprehensively actually solved the problem. Except maybe in problem one where it's given an idea which I believe I could then use to piece together the actual solution given all of the other things I know about this problem. And so what I mean is that it hasn't given an end-to-end -end solution of the problem. It's given an outline of ideas and hasn't actually stated in much detail like the final result or a final result at least that's good enough to be kind of published as a final form for the objects which I've kind of asked ChatGPT to study. In general, ChatGPT Pro tended to think about two times as long as GPT Plus on extended thinking mode, which is like the longest you can have it think for a problem before giving the answer. So I think it's a reasonable assumption to think that they're assigning twice the inference compute. And to see that the answers are kind of not that different does make me slightly concerned to the kind of long-term viability of improving these models at the rate at which it's kind of implied in all of the marketing and hype across this topic. That said, the amount that I do use ChatGPT Plus, the $20 a month, is still very much justified by the price. You know, I might have a meeting where we go over multiple whiteboards of work and then I take photographs of them. In cases like this, I can just give ChatGPT Plus like all of the photos of all of the slides, give a description of what we talked about and ask it to like comprehensively write it into LaTeX code. And if I did that on the free model, I would run out of my daily usage incredibly quickly. If you start giving it images and ask it to do stuff with those images, blah, 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 uh, pff, it will run out of your daily limit like straight away. Would I recommend anyone pay for the $200 a month one? Um, 
No, not really. I mean, not from what I've seen. I haven't seen a noticeable difference across the three questions that we asked it in its thinking ability or even its ability to give kind of better ideas. Like the ideas are the same ideas, they're not better, which is really what I would be paying for if I was paying $200 a month because I never run out of usage limits on the $20 a month one. So why would I pay more for a model which is basically the same? I'm hoping that in the coming months of using the $200 model, there will be a moment in which ChatGPT Pro can really distinguish itself to ChatGPT Plus with a kind of eureka moment where it comes up with an idea that ChatGPT Plus wouldn't have come up with. But I definitely don't expect that that's going to happen and I won't hold out hope for it. The support on the last few videos has been insane, so a genuine huge thank you to you guys. All of you guys that hyped the previous videos have actually kind of turned my channel into an actual channel, so I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot.